Oh man, Dale, my pleasure. Thanks so much for being here. I mean, you just, you had me on your show about a month ago, so I figured I'd return the favor. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I saw the tweet by probably someone in your community who said, uh, turn around is fair play. Now you get to grill me. So <laughs> I, I can tell you, I've been biting my fingernails all night. I'm pretty bashful and nervous about it, but I'll do my best. <laughs> which is uh, which is entirely untrue. There's no way you're bashful or nervous because you are an absolute legend. Uh, been in the industry 30 years. Mr. Only Dillon. in my own mind and maybe yours, buddy. But uh, uh, yeah, thank you. I hope I could uh, add some value to what you're trying to accomplish for the community. I got a great uh, feeling about you when I interviewed you, uh, your authenticity. And we all know that this is a world full of sharks and barracuda. And I know barracudas that I know you're trying to teach people and have successfully taught people how to fish. So I'll yeah. add what I can. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. My, I really, truly appreciate that. So folks, for those um, who are interested, this is Dale's uh, Twitter address, at Forex Stop Hunter, and his website, forexanalytics.com. Uh, so you, mo this is mostly a Forex trader, which is you're going to be our first Forex trader on the show. And so I'd love for anyone who is here and watching or listening, you're welcome to ask Dale any questions. But Dale, can you just give us a background? Uh, where, do you, where do you live? How long have you been in the industry? And how did you start? Okay, well, I'm currently in Temecula, California. It's kind of a wine country outside of San Diego. Um, born and raised in Chicago, cut my teeth in the industry as a runner on the floor of the CME. And uh, a floor broker took me off the floor and uh, had me licensed to handle his book while he was in the pit trading lumber. I uh, have had my own GIB over the years. Um, Let's see. Uh, I really love the team I'm with right now at Forex Analytics. Uh, I really believe in what you're doing too. Social trading. We only have two eyeballs, so when you get a community together, uh, there's the support. Uh, very important how you facilitate it, because I've seen rooms where it's all about people's egos. Uh, even some people root for others' failure just to rationalize their own incompetency. So the environment's very important, and uh, I'm, I'm very well known for my work with RSI and three drive formations, and people call me coach. So I also coach people individually and within groups, and uh, I'm the host at Forex Analytics where we have great guests like you, and prior to our interview, doing probably something similar here to what you're doing as uh, the team gets out there one at a time and analyzes what they see and shares it in a free webinar uh, setting. Absolutely. Tell, tell us about your work with RSI. Is that the Relative Strength Index Indicator? Yes. Uh, well, I could uh, tell you or I could show you if you want to share, have me share my screen. But I yeah, if you're going to share your screen, that's fantastic. Uh, okay. So... I see the control there at the bottom. It says share screen. Yep. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen then. Um, and if you want to click that and try it out, that'd be fantastic. Let's see. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Got it. Just okay. loaded. All right. Uh, type in a one. Can everyone see Dale's screen? I can see it just fine. Just to make sure. Okay, beautiful. Yep. All right. Beautiful. Looks good, Dale. Okay, so uh, I've actually renamed the RSI. You know, m many people use it just to say, well, you know, we have an 80 reading. It's overbought. I should sell it. Uh, it's at 20 or lower. It's so oversold. Maybe it's a good buy. Um, but I've renamed it by what it implies at different readings. So I call it the real simple implicator. <laughs> nice. uh, okay, it's, it's not even a word when I type it I get a spell check on it Jeremy <laughs> but uh, you know, here's a few examples of uh, certain things that I teach and uh, we could take a look at the end that recently rallied and what I teach are what's a confirm low and that's when the price and momentum the momentum confirms it price made a new low RSI made a new low 
the implications of confirmed highs and lows is, is, you know, nothing is always, but a high probability when a market makes a new low, uh, that it is not the low, it's just a low. Mm -hmm. And that after a bounce, as a trader, I know I should be looking for at least another, which gives me something actionable to do, knowing I should uh, be looking for reasons to short rallies after a confirmed low or reason, uh, reasons to buy breaks after a confirmed high. And then what happens after that is then you have your second low. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, this low, and, you know, it's – not rocket scientists. It's a non-confirmation. It's a divergence. Um, I have certain readings that uh, I filter out uh, different signals to give me better reasons to do it. And then from there on the non-confirmation, you had uh, another rally and a third low. So I learned this formation from a guy named J.R. Hill in the 70s. It's called three drives to a bottom. You get three drives to a top as well. Um, there's something about the number three, it's a number of completion. Mm -hmm. I could think of all kinds of examples of three in popular culture. Excuse me, it's a meeting I'm missing. Uh, and uh, popular culture, people will say, well, the third time's a charm. <laughs> right. Right. And then yeah. athletics, three strikes, you're out. If you're a hockey player, you know, everyone wants a hat trick. Yep. Earth is the third planet from the sun. Yeah. Uh, even spiritually in the Godhead, there's three persons. Okay, so you have three as being a number of completion, and you know I'm a big believer that uh, mar markets are really a reflection of the universe. That's why things like Fibonacci and GAN and geometry and formations work that uh, – you know, I don't know everyone's belief system, but whoever designed the universe was a mathematician. And uh, that's why people trade patterns and all kinds of work has derived from it because it's really a reflection of how the universe works along with the emotional uh, ties to it with sentiment and, you know, optimism and complacency and fear and panic sure. and those elements. So sure. I'm gonna try to draw, I'm gonna try to draw on your screen, Dale. Let me know if you can. Can you see that green line that pop up on your screen? Yeah, there. Yeah, I see okay. it. So, so this is the divergence you're referring to the the uh, currency making lower lows and your uh, um, RSI making higher lows. Yeah, and actually, uh, the key is that there were two. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I'm not saying that trading one divergence doesn't work, but the more uh, divergences that you have and the ideal setup is two for three drive. Um, and uh, the ideal setup is a reading over 30. And so three drive bottom. Three drives to a bottom. Three drives to a bottom. Okay. Very nice. That's all I know. I'm a, I'm a one trick pony. <laughs> That's all right. That, that's a, hey, the market rewards the special. You know, I've told, I've told people, and I don't, I, I'm not sure what you teach. I, I, I know you're pretty well versed in a lot of different methods, Jeremy, but you know, I knew guys um, that never left one trading pit in Chicago. You know, perhaps they were in the cattle pit. And they didn't have to know what was happening in the currency pits or what was happening in uh, Euro dollars or what was happening in the gold market. Um, I really believe, and teach that people should limit the amount of things that they watch and cover and trade because these guys didn't diversify and they still had shelfers waiting for them at the close of the session because they knew that market like the back of their hand every important critical level and they were an expert in one instead of a jack of all trades mm -hmm. use upon so, uh, you know, that's something else that I teach. In fact, uh, I think it was another interview I was in with, oh, Etienne Crete, where he said someone once told him that if you can't remember the last price of anything that you're trading, um, you're trading too many instruments. Ah, the last price. I like that. Yeah.
Yeah, if you don't know where things are trading at, approximately, uh, if someone asks you and you have to look at your screen to know it, you're trading too many instruments. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes lo I mean, it makes tons of sense. So you focus fo uh, primarily on forex, right? Well, with forex analytics, we cover really more than forex. We cover commodities, the gold, uh, the silver, uh, crude oil. We cover stock indexes. So, uh, you know, the CFD world. Um, and personally, I, you know, when you were on, I, I told you I, you know, trade bearish and bullish ETFs uh, for my own account because I don't know about you, but when I'm producing a show or running a show, uh, I don't have the same type of uh, attention and focus that uh, I need to always be trading currencies and um, any ETFs. I could be wrong for a few days um, and still be, you know, right the market. And that's something else that I teach. Uh, I do take some FX trades, but I do it on very reduced margin. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm a big believer that uh, to use less leverage when you trade the market, even wrote a song about it. So, you know, a lot of people, especially uh, newer traders, are trying to get rich overnight. I want to use the baseball metaphor that your biggest home run hitters were also your biggest strikeout kings. Sure. And, and in this business, you really can't afford to strike out because you may not be able to get back to bat again. Uh -huh. So the difference between pros and amateurs are – Pros know how to lose, so they have money left to be right with. Right, 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 right. Oh, very okay. you know, so, Yeah, so, you know, use trade small, and I, I wrote this. Use less leverage when you trade the markets. Use wider stops so you don't get picked off. If you don't use less leverage, you might lose your head and your account will be dead. You it's phenomenal. That's like the Johnny Cash of the stock market right there, man. Yeah, there you go, buddy. The Elvis. You got, the you Elvis. Got, a great, great, got a great voice. So uh, that's really key. And, you know, uh, I really I tell beginning traders, I don't like demo accounts because people don't take them seriously. Yeah. But I think that, you know, if you're going into FX for the first time, uh, find a broker that lets you trade micro lots where, you know, if there's a hundred point move in the Euro, it's only going to be uh, $10, but at least you have some skin in the game and it begins to teach you uh, what it's like to have, risk even though it's something that's not going to destroy you or make you rich at least you have the emotion of money being on the line totally totally so on that scope of work Dale, i had zane ask me which forex brokers uh do you know do you like the most here in the u.s u.s citizens only well the, the only could, there's only a couple all right so we had the baton death march because a lot of uh fx brokers left the country because of uh dot frank and compliance uh compliance you know compliance 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 yeah but uh i use uh td ameritrade right now because i could trade stocks and currency there oh okay interesting so td ameritrade um can also trade uh, uh i know that but it's never i never actually just traded through td ameritrade but it makes sense makes tons of sense um would you have a favorite currency pair that you focus on then no, to me, setups are more important uh, than the individual currency. But I, I, I trade mainly majors. You know, some crosses, but mainly majors. So, I, and you know, I, I think that people could also just you know trade the Dixie, which is a little lower beta. You know, to me, Jeremy, a chart is a chart is a chart. The only difference is the title, the beta, and the leverage. But yeah. I could trade what I trade on any instruments because the patterns are the same. Sure, sure, absolutely. So this is a question I really don't know the answer to, but I've seen you make mention of it a few times on your Twitter. 
Um, do you trade also? Do you also trade Bitcoin, or is it something you've been? You're no, I've never traded a, a crypto. I, I watched it. Uh, I want to learn about it. I think it uh, is going to be the new wave, but I'm kind of looking at it as uh, parallel to the dot com era, mm -hmm. where there, you know, we were saturated, and anything that had dot com after it uh, uh, gained all the astronomical valuations and then we had the, the pop of the bubble in 2000 but yet the ones that were standing were there for the next wave so um you know i think that uh cryptocurrencies are going to be the thing that you know i'm kind of like an old dog teach new tricks too but i'm open to learning about more about crypto fantastic um, and also and also but i i haven't traded it yet i don't have an account set up anywhere where i could do it Sure. And, uh, you know, trade what you know. Yep. And so even though I'm in a learning process and trying to learn more about them and I chart them and watch them, in fact, uh, you know, it's a pretty good gauge for um, speculative fever. I mean, Bitcoin did break before the market entered a corrective phase. So um, it could also be a great sentiment guide for you. So. Even though I'm trading FX, I look at correlations. I look at, you know, USD Canada. USD Canada is has been heading lower um, based upon strong crude prices. USD CAD, which means it's stronger, Canadian. Um, I watch uh, the correlation between risk and the US dollar yen. So it's great to get kind of a holistic view of the whole market um, by being able to uh, look at different parts of the jigsaw puzzle and see if the correlations are working. So yeah. uh, I look at correlations in the market to give me an overview. And when something is not responding the way it should, that's a market tell to me. And if something's acting better than it should in current market correlations or conditions, that's a market tell to me. So uh, I, I believe in having a holistic approach. You may not trade everything, but I watch a lot of different instruments. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So let's, let's talk a little bit about your charting application then. Um, I see you're using uh, TradingView. How long have you been using that? About a year. You like it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I like platforms, but I think it's a great uh, way for people to you know, chart, it's pretty handy, you have all the tools, you know, it's, uh, it's okay. Sure, what, what time frames do you specialize in on your Forex trading? Well, you know, when I'm looking for my setups, I like to have, uh, the, your first is, uh, I look at weeklies, and then I drill down. But for trading, swing trades, uh, to me, the daily four hour, and then the one hour are the three time frames I look for for setups. Because mm. you could have a setup on a daily that you're going to have much more risk on than uh, if you wait for that to confirm on a four hour time frame, you have less. And when it finally lines up on the one hour, you've drilled it down to where you, you're not assuming the safe. It may be a trade based off the daily, but you're not assuming the type of risk that you would take if it was only off the daily. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So th this might be a question just purely related to Forex, but um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but let's, let this number right here, so one of my traders is asking, that four on top of the Euro British pound, what does that mean? Like 87.24? Yeah, 87.24 and then there's like a six. Like uh, that's a fraction between four and five. Ah, uh, okay. So that's the, okay. Got it. Got it. So that's the yeah, different brokers have different spreads, etc. Mm, yep. Got it. Okay. Great. Noted. Noted. Uh, how long do you hold most of your swing trades normally? So my targets uh, reach, and I'm also a big believer in taking partials, and uh, because uh, I I really teach people that when my trades are working for thirty to fifty pips, regardless of how far away you are from the, from an objective to put something in the bank and get paid and it puts you in a win-win position tighten up your stops maybe even to break even 
Uh, if the market continues to go, uh, you'd still have something on for windfalls. And if the market retreats back to your entry level, the worst case scenario is you've made money. And it takes a lot of pressure off people. So love to get into a position where I have a lead and take a piece and then tighten up my risk. Do you ever, uh, so you leg out of a trade, do you ever leg into a trade? Yes, I do. Yeah, so I have a tendency to be early, so I, I piece into it. Okay. So piecing, so piecing in and piecing out. Yeah, look, when I was a young guy like you and uh, I had a lot of trades, I'd hit on the button. You do it occasionally, right? Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, no drawdown, immediate gratification. But it's the exception. It's not the rule. Agreed. Agreed. I, I think, I mean, okay. legging in, legging out, I mean, it makes sense because, like I said, it's, just, it's all about risk. So I have a, an expression, don't expect perfection at the crab table. So if you're not going to hit something on the button um, and it's in your area, and I will even scale in lower. Some people say they'll only scale in in their favor, but I will scale in lower. Um, and it actually gives me a chance to build a position if the market doesn't take off right away from my initial entry. Sure. And so, you, I mean, your charts here are pretty simple. So you're just using the 50, is that an EMA or simple SMA? Uh, it's the 50 EMA. 50 EMA, gotcha. Very nice. And uh, do you ever find yourself taking a day trade or is it all just swings? Well, uh, it, it's mainly swings, but uh, occasionally a day trade. But I, I tell people, if you can't be wrong for a day, how can you be right for a week? So that's why I believe in less leverage, and you have to really, if you're swing trading, at least be able to risk a daily average trading range. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people, their major problem, I'm not saying it doesn't happen to me, is you end up being uh, right the market, wrong the trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the because you got taken out, shaken out of a trade, Mr. Market's a pretty mean guy. And he's going to shake out as many participants as possible before the move they're looking for occurs. Then most likely without them. And I've seen very few people, um, you know, some of the people I work with can do it, but it really takes a pro <clears throat> to be um, take a loss on a position. And if the evidence is still there, to take that position again to be able to do it. And uh, most people will say, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to trade IBM again. They blame it on the instrument. Okay? Right. You know, when it was their, the, the way they set up the trade. So uh, you have to be prepared to, um, if it, your first attempt doesn't work, it's not the instrument you're trading. It was your timing. Sure. So that, that's the art of it. And you also have to be willing to uh, uh, change your mind. I mean, one of my favorite statements from a market legend, W. D. Gann, is if you don't learn how to change your mind, you won't have any change left. And some of the best trades are false breakouts. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you have everyone leaning the wrong way, and or a market that takes too long uh, for a breakout to follow through, it's giving you too much time a market that gives you uh, a week or two later the same opportunity to get long or short at a major breakout area is it's too accommodating for me and I've become skeptical. Sure. It's too easy kind of thing. So th this will, this might be a nice controversial subject, but you mentioned, I mean, in your, in your Twitter handle, it's uh, stop hunters. You're talking about the market shaking it out and you, you work in the pit. So, I mean, does that happen? Do market makers visually see where people's stops are and they hunt for them? or An open outcry, yeah. And uh, also today through, you know, high-frequency traders, they go for the liquidity. So that happens a lot. And, you know, stop hunts do happen a lot. You'll see people go, well, Dale, where, uh, how do you know where the stops are? I'll go, well, look at your chart and imagine you're long. Where would you put your sell stop? And they'll tell me, and I'll go. That's where everyone else's is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep. So uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't believe that it's going to serve you to have your stop exactly under these swing highs and lows. Um, some stop hunts only take them out by a few pips. 
Um, if it at times maybe 20, 30, you know, I, I'm not sure in stocks, maybe, you know, uh, maybe a half or, you know, a point, mm. but, uh, don't put your stop where everyone else's is. In fact, sometimes you, if you really believe stops are going to be taken out, pretend you're an HFT or a floor broker and get long into where you think the buy stops are. And then when they're elected, use that to liquidate your trade. Or if you're a counter trend trader, use that as uh, some type of potential reversal turning point. Yes. So, you know, yes. that's the way I look at markets. Yes, yes, yes. I love that because that's that's what I, <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that because that's something that I discuss too sometimes where I mention if you're going to scale into a trade and maybe it's your first time taking it, you're kind of fearful that maybe you're going to get stopped out uh, or maybe, you know, your stop is going to be too aggressive. So something like this on your chart, you know, you're going to enter here and put your stop here um, just based on that candle right there. And my thoughts are if you're going to lag into that position, then just be, become the frequency, the high frequency trader, become the stop hunter and put your entry where your stop would be. You know, I mean, just, just right. change perspective a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, I, I really am sorry I'm going to have to, I know you're probably thinking about an hour, but there's a personal uh, medical emergency that happened in our family about, uh, you know, four or five hours ago. Oh, wow. And sorry. My phone, and my phone's been ringing, so. Oh, I no, to, no worries. I, I have to find out what's going on. I, you yeah. know, maybe we could uh, do this again sometime. I hope yeah. in 30 minutes that your community got something out of it. And uh, I wish you all the success in the world with trying to help people succeed in a very difficult business. You know what? Uh, unlike a lot of people, Jeremy, it's not for everyone. And there's also no law that you have to trade. It's a choice. Okay. And if it's really ruining uh, relationships or making it hard for you to sleep and I'm not saying I didn't go through those times and maybe I was smart to gut it out maybe I would have been better off letting go but if it's really becoming a negative force in your life you're not suited find a good money manager and there are those out there that know how to do it and uh, you know it's not an easy thing to be a self-directed trader and uh, it takes persistence, perseverance, and you really don't know if you have faith until you go through adversity. Uh, the true traders, the, the true metal of a trader is how they manage themselves during a drawdown, manage the market and manage themselves during a time of adversity. You don't really don't know if you have faith until you face adversity. Yep. So, yeah. Something to keep in mind. Absolutely. Well, Dale, thank you so much for your time. Uh, all my thoughts will be with you and your family. Just keep, keep me posted on that. And uh, no, thank you for being here. I, I cherish your time immensely and uh, we will make sure to have you back again, my friend. Okay, so they could find, your people could find me if they want to just watch my stream on Twitter at Forex Stop Hunter. And if they're interested in FX, we have the best free FX room on the net uh, for the best traders, teammates. I interviewed them all when I was on FX Street and said to myself, man, it'd be cool to work with these guys. So now I am, and they're all award-winning technicians. All right? I love it. You're the man, brother. Thank you. All right, Jeremy. All I'll right. see you. See you, buddy. Good hunting. And remember, everybody – whether it's pips or points, don't just count your pips and your points. Count your blessings. And I'll, I'll see you later on, my trading right. morning. See you, buddy. Take care, Rob. All right, buddy. I love it. I love it. There we go, folks. Pure, pure trading legend right there for 30 minutes. I love it. Wonderful time. Some great lessons. I'm going to have to go back and write all those... <laughs> Fantastic, just verbal bombs of knowledge. Have to jot those things down in there. Garanga says you're getting the wise sages in here. Yes, it's fantastic. So I'll, I'm gonna keep in touch with Dale, make sure his family and everyone's okay. But uh, appreciate it. Garanga says in 20 years you'll be one of them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Tw just 20 more years. It's a phenomenal. 30 years in the, in the industry, Dale's been in there.
uh, been in here. So that's really, really amazing. Adam says, is the interview recorded? Always is, my man. Everything I do, always recorded, brother. So I'll be emailing that out this weekend. Uh, for those who are still watching, um, I did, you know, I did, did record that afternoon. If you're watching and you're a part of Dale's team and his community, thanks so much for allowing us to interview Dale. And uh, I appreciate your time and the opportunity, Dale, as well. And for those, for the real life traders who are watching this, also thanks for being a part of the community. Just an incredible opportunity and always can learn something new, right? Don't ever think you can, you, you've learned it all because you haven't. Just when you think you've learned everything or you're the best trader in the world, you're about to get some new information. <laughs> Justin says, uh, can you play the guitar? No, no, I cannot. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Gronk says three drives to the bottom. Got to start looking for that. Oh yeah, it's actually a pretty frequent, um, really good pattern. So here's one that happened on Alcoa on the daily. Uh, this is the most recent one I can think of. And I don't use the RSI settings that uh, Dale uses uh, precisely, but they work pretty much the same. So uh, if you got a uh, pattern like this, when you have you know three moves, so so something like this, and so, you know, here's two examples actually. You'll notice RSI. This is just the regular RSI setting of nine. Uh, both of those situations, you got the diver di di divergence, and um, on the third hit, so one, two, uh, three starts coming in. You're starting to go long around that time, and obviously you would have had to wait a week or two, but then it continued higher. And same thing here. So first touch, second touch, third touch, and on the third instance, you know, you're getting in bullish. And again, you still have to wait a little bit. It's not gonna happen overnight, but uh, yeah, it's a really good pattern. Rule of three, very strong, especially when it comes to divergence. Now again, just like everything, right? Everything works just on all the time. So it's, it's important to remember that when you're arguing into a trade like that, it doesn't mean just because you get in, it's gonna work. You still have to be patient, still have to, so hold, you know, look at the overall trend, kind of use that as your as your benefit. But it's a really powerful, um, very powerful tool, especially if you can find it on the second and even better on the third time. So you don't have to wait one, two, three whole rotations for that to actually come in. Uh, now, obviously, you're probably thinking, does this happen on all time frames? Well, of course, right? The market's fractal. So. Let me just go see if I can find one on Netflix. So here's one on Netflix that I was watching the other day. Uh, now again, this is just something that I, I know far too many things sometimes to teach you uh, teach everything I know. But here's the here's the lower highs and here's those higher lows on RSI. And this is actually a um, a four banger. This one right here did not quite make a new low, uh, but this one did. And what's really interesting about that signal is again, this is just your regular RSI making higher lows, and this was the trap. This was certainly a place where people got, their stops got hit, at like just like Dale was talking about. And so if you can approach the market from an extent of, you know, where's everyone stops, try to find that divergence. Um, and instead of stopping out there, you're buying there, right? You're buying at that support level. So if I take my screen off, my drawings off for a second, here's the support. Oops, it's a terrible drawing. Let me try that one more time. So here's the uh, support time frame. Boom, boom, boom. And on the third level, uh, you're just having your entry there to buy. And if you said, okay, well, that's what my entry be and my stop's gonna be a little bit lower, right? There's tons of ways you can approach that. You can risk half an hour or half your position uh, at your normal entry. Then you can risk the other half of your position at your stop and then have a little bit of a lower stop, right? Now, what if the lower stop gets hit? Okay, then you lose on the trade, right? No big deal. But as Dale was mentioning, he likes into a trade. Um, I don't know if that's the way he does it, but that's a way it can certainly be done, right? Where you have half an R at an obvious support or resistance, and then another half an R where your stop might be. And if you only get tagged on half the R, at least you're in the position, at least you're making money. And if it goes where your stop would have been, right, you get another position, another half an R of risk, and you still have your stop in, in place just in case it does not work out. So, yep, just like everything else, as Garang is mentioning, it just takes a little bit of patience. Everything in the markets, that key word. Gotta get paid to be patient. Patience, for sure. So it's off, uh, another fun strategy that does involve a divergence. As far as using 
stochastics and RSI. I don't really use stochastics. I find stochastics a lot slower than RSI, but I do have the Stokes RSI setting. So here's the Stokes, and uh, again, I just find stochastics a lot slower than RSI. So in this situation, you can see, again, on the hourly chart, you do have a higher low, and that higher low came in about here, and the cross really came in about there. So it depends on exactly when you got in, right? If you got in uh, here, depending on where you put your stop, you might have gotten stopped out. You know, it just really depends. But I do like the RSI uh, for this particular instrument a lot more than Stokes. Stokes is probably, it's just my opinion, one of my least favorite indicators I've ever used. So, just kind of my thoughts. Anyway, uh, again, for those who are watching, uh, thanks so much. Marsha says, do you ever use the CCI? Uh, I have used it in the past. I do not presently use it um, at all. I have used it before. I know how it works, but I don't presently use it. Um, yeah, that's a good question. What about you, Marsha? Do you, you use the CCI? She says, yes, right on. There you go. Well, uh, you know what, Marsh? If you want, let me know. But maybe me and you can chat, and I can interview you next week, and you can tell people how you use the CCI if you want. Because I do have another opening for next week. Same time, same place on Wednesday. <laughs> Marsh says, no way. Are you sure? Uh, just think about it. Think about it. I, I will be reaching out to find another interviewee next week. And then the week after next, um, Brad's going to have one of his buddies as I will be on a vacation. But anyway, again, for those who are watching this recording, thanks so much for being here. You all rock. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade.